So, this weekend uh, we're going to be mixing things up a little bit. Uh, this weekend shenanigans going to be cooking based because a lot of people have asked me about uh, sauces and other various things. Uh, I am full Italian. Both parents are, are from Italy going back generations. So I figured uh, we'll make a tomato sauce since this is the, the classic. It's going to be a, uh, a bolognese sauce. So it should be pretty good. Uh, there's a couple cheater things that I'm going to do and I'll give you tips and tricks and all that fun jazz. Anywho, uh, I start with these guys here. You could start with, uh, you know, canned San Marzano tomatoes if you want, and then you could puree them and season them. Uh, it does make it better, admittedly, but it is a lot more work, so uh, I'd like to cheat. These guys are seasoned, but they're barely, if anything, and they're really, they're just a very bland sauce. That's why I use them as a, as a base. These guys are pretty good. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to prepare our meat, and that's going to be... Uh, this guy here, which is still frozen because uh, I'm stupid and forgot to take it out of the freezer. Uh, we're gonna need two carrots, an onion, and yeah, that should be about enough to get us started there. Uh, cast iron skillet, it's the way to cook. Cook with cast iron, just don't, I don't know why people would use anything other than cast iron, it's beautiful. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, just to clear up our workspace, I'm going to throw these guys into uh, the old crock pot and get those guys started. Uh, the thing about this dish, to make this sauce and to make it really good, it needs to cook for at least, mm, I like to let mine go for 8 to 12 hours. So it's uh, what time is it? about 9.30 in the morning, so around I don't know, 6 o'clock tonight I'll be eating this. So first things first, we're gonna get out of the old crock pot. Get this guy over here. Okay, unplug the coffee maker. We're gonna set this guy to high. Take both jars. No fuss. And this, so far as serving sizes go, mm, I mean, I'm young and hungry, and so I'll eat this over maybe a meal and a half or so. Uh, another ancient Chinese secret here, or ancient Italian secret, I should say, to get all your sauce out. Jars, pour a little bit of water in the bottom of them. Make sure they're sealed. Get that guy a little shake. Most of that's going to boil right off, anyways, so it doesn't matter. And now your jar is clean and ready for the recycling. Also, another good tip save these jars if you have a uh, if you're cooking something that's got high fat, you can actually pour the grease and whatnot into these jars, keep them under the sink, and then uh, once they're full, you just toss them in the trash. Save your, uh, your plumbing. Let's get rid of these guys. Okay, so the pan is getting warm. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to that. Okay, a lot of olive oil, apparently. I don't know how well this is coming out. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. This is uh, Himalayan pink salt. I don't use the regular, the one with the crying girl with the umbrella on it. Yeah, that stuff, uh, they add aluminum sulfate, I think? Or aluminum, aluminum oxide. Anyways, they're adding uh, stuff that causes all sorts of other problems. And it's salt, it's, I mean, it's salt. The only thing that should be in there is sodium chloride, maybe a few other minerals just for taste. So we'll start with the onion. I'll show you how I, I chop an onion. Start by slicing it in half. And then I hate the way all these, these little things from it, so I always keep it constantly dusted off. Take the onion, flip it over. Take one end off, take the other end off. And if they're still on your knife, I got a trash can down here. You can fling them off. And it's just real nice, real clean. 
I do the dirty prep of my onions over in this corner. And then we'll get these guys peeled. And these onions they always like to fight me. Yeah, come on. There we go. One half on your right go. And these are the uh, yellow onions. So they're slightly sweet. Uh, you can use just regular white onions, but it's not going to give uh, not going to give quite as good of a flavor, in my opinion. I've tried both. Uh, I've also used red onions, and that'll give a uh, gives an interesting taste. But yellow onions is the way to go. Rinse off my knife. So the way I chop an onion, get that pain in the hand up real quick, is grab it like this. Keep your hands in the claw formation. Oh, another pro tip, which I learned from a an actual chef when I was working in a restaurant. For your knife, you don't want to hold it like this. It's, I mean, you can, it's kind of amateur. You actually want to choke up on it and hold it like this. It gives you a little bit more control. You can also put your forefinger up so you're not quite, you know, wielding it like a sword, really. So anyways, with a nice sharp knife, we're going to come on down. There we go. And then... Off of there. When you get to the end part, you can just flip it down. Just like that. Give the rest of this a few more chops just to make sure. And when you wipe this edge of the knife, make sure you're coming up. That way you don't slice your fingers off. One half. And keep in mind this onion is going to get. Uh, cooked down in the sauce and in the pan, so those big chunks, you know, really no biggie. It's going to become so soft you won't notice it. There we go, one chopped onion. And the pan should be getting nice and hot by now, so we're going to go ahead and throw this whole guy in there. Yep. Good and hot. The important thing of cooking is you never throw food into a cold pan. You always, always want your pan to be nice and warm. I'm going to take two carrots. Uh, only one of these is actually going in the sauce. The other one I'm actually going to nibble on while I cook because, I don't know, why not? Carrots are good. So take your peeler, go ahead and peel it. I got a trash can down here, so I'm going to. Do it over this trash can. So what we're making here, this is actually known as a merpois, which is French, um, sort of the base that you start with for anything that you're making, soups, salad, or not salads, but uh, soups, uh, any cooked meat, stuff like that. And the merpois is based off of three ingredients. It's celery, onion, and carrot. And you chop them all up, you throw them into your pot, and then you, uh, you saute them. And that gives you the starting point or base for all of your other dishes. Now this carrot's been sitting a while, which is why it's uh, pretty loose. You can see this one's a lot firmer. So I'm gonna put this one in, and I'll probably eat this one since Oh, she's still good, but I want the firmer one. Now, I don't actually have celery, so it's gonna be it's gonna be missing a little bit, but it should still be fine. The celery, in my opinion, actually doesn't add all that much. The biggest two things are the carrot and the, um, the onion. The onion gives you that, you know, that savory taste that almost all dishes have. That's why onion's thrown into just about everything. And the carrots, the carrots are actually extremely important because when you eat a carrot, 
let it sit in your mouth, you notice that it actually starts to taste sweet after a while. I mean, it's because the acids and whatnot and enzymes in your saliva will start to break it down ahead of your digestive tract, actually. And that will make it sweet. Well, tomato sauces naturally are kind of acidic. That's why if you eat a tomato sauce, it's very common to uh, get heartburn afterwards. So the carrot is going to counteract that and actually sweeten the sauce and it's going to make it, it'll cancel out the acidity and it's going to give you a sauce that's very mild and I mean it'll still taste like tomato sauce but it won't be bitter at all, it won't be, it, it makes a noticeable difference enough to where I'd say this is one of the more important ingredients to make sure it gets in there. Let's go ahead and throw this guy in the pan. About it for our ingredient chopping for now. We'll get these guys sauteed and then throw in our meat, which is going to take a while to cook because it's frozen, but whatever, we'll, we'll deal. Yeah, cute. We're over to the stove now, and uh, here we have our onions and carrots going in the old cast iron skillet. And uh, I want to let these go till you're sort of getting, let's see if I can pull one out that looks like it. So this translucent color, a little bit of brown actually isn't horrible for them, we can add some good flavor. But we want to get these guys cooked down before we, uh, we throw the meat in, because the meat's going to, the fat's going to render out, and then this thing's going to essentially be like a deep fryer. I'll keep pouring off the oil so that I don't, uh, well I don't deep fry everything, but it's still if it's better, life's just better this way. Saute them first, your carrots. If you had your celery, if I had celery, it would already be in here and that would have been cooked down. It cooks down almost immediately. But whatever, this isn't gonna hurt anything. This is a, I make this pretty regularly. This is just a weekday meal, so. I'm not really going crazy with it. All right, well, start getting my meat prepared over here. Hmm. Alright, so side note, I don't know if other people do this, but I would recommend this. This is for bachelors. When you go to the store, buy it in the three pound tube, if you can. Then you slice it into thirds, so you get pound increments. Stick that in your freezer. And you're good for, I mean, depending on how much meat you're consuming weekly, you always have it on hand. You don't have to constantly go to the store. Now, if you know that you're cooking a meat or, or cooking a meal that night that needs meat, yeah, I'd get it fresh, you know, keep that, you know, fresh pound from the butcher. But if I'm at the supermarket and I know I'm down to maybe a pound left in the freezer, I'll grab another three pound thing, just keep it on stock. That's just a little, uh, little tidbit. It makes a good difference and, uh, you always want to have meat. You don't want it to always run out every time you need everything. So I'm gonna split the side on this with a sharp knife. And you want to be careful because if you do start shredding this thing, you will be eating the wrapper. Go ahead and set that guy right on top like that. Okay, she's all nice and simmered down. Got the, the meat finally all broken up. Temper uh, heat is off, so it's sort of cooling down now. I'm going to pour off uh, maybe three quarters of the grease and fat that's in here. Uh, you do want some of it, but you don't want all of it because it's yeah, it's just too much. You don't want to be eating that. Cholesterol is a bad thing, you know. 
So I'm gonna pour this off and then I'll add this thing just as it is straight into the sauce. So now we're going to add, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, I guess, uh, the beginning seasonings. So the two that you want to go with, bay leaf, this is rosemary. Uh, both of these are fresh from my father's garden, so as fresh as you can get is preferable. Then a handful of rosemary, and you just kind of rub those two together so there's no big chunks. So, and the other bonus is it'll make your hands smell nice. Throw in, uh, I like to throw in two good sizes, but since this one's a small one, we'll throw in three. And those do, I take those out later. They're just to add a little bit of flavor, seasoning. Get a wood spoon here. And then salt and pepper has already been added to the, the makeshift more plot and meat. So I'm gonna let it simmer, let it get going, and then in an hour I'm gonna taste it and I'll add more, more rosemary, more bay leaf, more salt, pepper, stuff like that as needed. And we might add uh, some Italian seasoning as well, depending on, on what it needs. Okay. Let's let that go. In the meantime, let's start on the pasta itself. The pasta from scratch, we want to call it from scratch, is uh, it's pretty easy. It's only it's only three ingredients, so yeah, it's uh, not too hard. Start with a large bowl. First ingredient all-purpose flour. Now, normally you would measure this, but I know about how much I want, so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. And a little more, a little less isn't too bad. You adjust, so the three ingredients that you're adding, you can always add more of one or the other to get what you need out of it. So don't feel like, oh, I added too much flour, end of the world. That's probably about enough right there. It's just me, myself, and I. We're gonna need last egg. yolk from a third and the whites I'll save them. Put those in something else. Maybe make scrambled eggs or something tomorrow. Actually, you know what? I think I'll saute the whites right now. That sounds pretty good. A little salt and pepper. Beautiful thing about cast iron, you just saute it in the same pan. Oh, it's gonna be great. So here's the one. And for the third, ah, well, uh, <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's going to be a whole egg this time. Sometimes that's, uh, that's just how it happens, you know? measuring cup and I'm gonna fill this up with some water. I'm 
I'm just using this as a, a container or go between. I'm not actually measuring how much it's going in there. Alrighty, so it's been a few hours now. The sauce is what we're looking at here. It smells real good. It's a shame you can't smell it through the uh, through the confuser, but anyways. Uh, I gave it a little taste test, added a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. Uh, I'm going to throw in a little bit of Italian seasoning, and the other thing I'm going to throw in is this guy here. This is something that I've added uh, in recent years. It doesn't have to be this brand, but coconut milk in general. Uh, adding that, it really it just it mellows it out, makes it real good. And you want to add it a little bit earlier, like right now. I'm also going to drop this down to low instead of high. Um, so it's got a little bit longer to to sort of simmer out, sort of share the... Uh, we got a little, little love jacuzzi here with all the, the ingredients, and we want them to all get along. So. Yeah, I'll dump this guy in, add those seasonings, and then I uh, probably won't have to touch it again until it's about ready to serve, which should be in, uh, let's see, it's 11.30 now, so maybe 5.30 is probably when I'll, I'll dig into this. Yeah, the, the coconut milk makes one hell of a difference. It's not... Uh, Perhaps not exactly like Babushka used to make, but I I find it's uh, I enjoy the flavor. This is sort of my version of uh, making the sauce. The other nice thing about it, after this sauce simmers and with the uh, the addition of the coconut milk and everything, you can you can spoon this stuff straight on an empty stomach. You will not get heartburn. It is. But it, it still has that great, you know, tomato sauce. It's not like it mellows out or anything. It, it's a just a delicious sauce. But it because of the, the coconut milk and the addition of the carrots, letting it simmer for a long time, all those things together makes it a sauce that you could just eat to your heart's content. It goes great with any pasta. And, uh, oh yeah, it's just fantastic. Looking forward to tonight. So our sauce has been simmering. It's about 5.56, 6 o'clock almost. The sauce has been simmering most of the day. The counter's been cleaned off. Uh, down a little bit of flour. Go ahead and take out our dough. Also, Water going. And that ought to do her. Alrighty. Get this guy to open up. There's our dough. Get a little bit of flour on her. Now what I'm gonna do, cut 
this into a couple of smaller pieces just to make it a little easier to manage. And we're gonna feed her through the machine here. Let the machine do most of the work. Okay, pot of water is boiling real good. So, once it's boiling like that, what you want to do is take a scoop of your salt. I'm going to throw in another little half scoop. You must always salt your water. It's very important. Okay, where is it? Here it is. I'm going to take a strainer and take your pasta. ready. I'm going to wait for the clock to change here. There we go. Make sure they're sort of loose in there. We're going to let that boil for one minute. there and that's a minute. This here is the close-up. You can see the sauce coats the noodles well. You get a little bit of uh, carrot and meat and onion in every bite. Oh man it's just so good. Put the cheese on top right when it's hot. So good. This is it in the cooker. Yeah, not a hundred percent like babushka used to make, but it's still. Oh, this is this is a good, this is a good bit of bit of pasta right here. Very good. <laughs>